Oh, dash it. Hold on, I'll fix it. Metallurgy? Yes. Metallurgy is a science about getting metals out of rocks, and metallurgists, or mineral processing engineers, are the people who do exactly that. Ah. One of the jobs that metallurgist is interested in is extracting as much mineral as possible from an ore. Now, that's a rock that contains the minerals. They then want to convert as much of the ore mineral into metal. This metal can be used in, in a variety of ways, such Silencio, as... Silencio, old man! How do we get the metal out of the rock? Well, one way of doing this is by something called... Solvent Extraction! The way it works is, after a mineral ore containing copper has been mined and crushed, the ore is, is piled into a heap. Now, the stacked ore heap is washed with a dilute sulfuric acid. The copper dissolves to form a blue solution called copper sulfate. But it's not all over yet, because we want copper metal, not copper sulfate. <laughs> now, this is where the real fun begins. A process called Solvent Extraction has to happen before electro-winning can take place. Easy, Tiger. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here, aren't we? Yes, we're only looking at the solvent extraction part today. Heap leaching produces only low concentrations of copper in the aqueous copper solutions, see left, and this is too weak to allow successful electro-winning of the copper metal. Also, the leach solution contains dissolved iron as well as copper, and iron shouldn't reach the electro-winning stage. In English? What this means is that in the solvent extraction process, we're purifying the solution so it contains only copper, and also concentrating it ready for electro-winning. See right. So, what do we need to get started? Well, safety comes first, so we'll need covered shoes, long trousers, a long sleeve shirt, these are all necessary. And don't forget gloves to protect your fingers, and safety glasses to protect your eyeballs. Right. Hot. And this is the equipment and the chemicals that we'll be using in the completion of this experiment. By completing this experiment, you will determine the number of extraction stages that are required to fully load the organic phase with copper. Now, chemists and metallurgical engineers do this to collect extraction data for varying conditions that may be encountered in the industrial process and to construct extraction isotherms. They use these isotherms to determine the optimum number of stages needed for the extraction and stripping processes and to determine how large the reactors need to be. Dude. What? English. You want to know how many times you have to go through the process before the extractant won't take any more copper. And this way it's possible to minimize time and costs in obtaining the copper. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Let's get started. What do we do first? All right, well, you need to begin with the prepared solvent extractant. 200 milliliters of this is placed in a separating funnel. Next, 200 milliliters of the copper sulfate leach solution. And that's the blue stuff, right? Uh, yes, that's right, the blue stuff. 200 milliliters of the blue colored copper sulfate leach solution is added. Next, we insert the rubber stopper into the top of the separating funnel and shake the mixture vigorously for two whole minutes. Jeez, that's a lot of shaking. Well, the leach solution and organic phase are mixed like this to extract copper ions, but not iron ions, from the aqueous layer and dissolve them in the organic layer. The vigorous mixing increases the surface area of contact between the aqueous and organic phases, so increasing the overall rate of reaction and hence reducing the time required to reach chemical equilibrium. Parlez-vous anglais? <laughs> Sorry. We're shaking it up to increase the chance of contact between copper and the extractant. It, it just happens faster that way. Ah, sweet. Now we allow the phases to separate, and this will take approximately one minute. Hey, uh, what's the go? It changed colour and formed layers. Well, when the extractant molecules come in contact with the copper cations, they form a complex called a chelate. The chelated species is soluble in the kerosene and not the aqueous layer. So when the two immiscible liquids are allowed to settle, they actually separate out. The raffinate can then be siphoned off, leaving behind the organic phase that is somewhat enriched in copper, just as we're doing now. What's he up to now? Now we're measuring and recording the pH of the extracted aqueous phase. We're also using eye colorimetry to determine the copper iron concentration remaining in the aqueous layer. Uh, righto then. It'll make more sense later. If the organic phase is mixed again with fresh PLS, even more copper cations will be chelated, further enriching the organic phase with copper. Sufficient contacting steps are undertaken to ensure that the organic phase is loaded to optimum capacity with copper. Ah, so what you're saying is that we do it over and over to get as much copper as we can. That's right. I get this. 
Now let's observe carefully as we conduct the same procedure a further five times. Then we'll take a closer look at the copper iron concentration at the end of each phase. Whatever you say, you're the duck, duck. So what's the go with comparing the samples? Well, we're checking to determine the concentration of copper in each of the aqueous layer samples. Yeah, but surely there's a machine that can do that. Yes, there is. It's called a colorimeter. It works by using a wavelength of about 625 nanometers to measure the absorbance of the solutions. By drawing a Beer-Lambert curve, it's possible to gauge the concentration of each of the samples. So if my school didn't have one of those fancy gadgets, we could do what he's doing. Correct again, my young apprentice. Dry. What? Uh, what does that even mean? I don't know. Oh, uh, well, 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 we're using a technique called eye colorimetry. Now, this is where you can compare the color of copper sulfate solutions with a known concentration with the resultant solution that you have. By holding each samples up to the light alongside the standards, it's possible to make a good approximation of the copper iron concentration. Hmm, radio. Oh, that sounds like the end, but I'm not going to give you the results here. Oh no. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to do the experiment or think for yourself. And where is the fun in that? Hmm?